we don't have to go to China, right? The in the United States, there was um, an article uh, called the Perpetual Lineup in 2016 that showed that I believe it's um, half, one in two American adults are in an automated facial recognition, uh, facial recognition database uh, that could be used by law enforcement for anything they want. And in particular, immigrants are heavily surveilled and attacked with any sort of surveillance system you can think about. There is a militarization of the border. If you think about where so much money is going in terms of artificial intelligence, I mean, people talk about benefiting humanity, but in the US, the border surveillance system has grown by billions, you know? And I just don't understand it because the, 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 the coronavirus in the U.S. Is has been killing more than 2,000 people every single day, right? And so it's not the public health system that the money's going for. It's this boogeyman, right? This, this, it, it's, this, it's, it's rooted in racism and fear. It's this, oh, we, we, you know, we shouldn't have all of these um, immigrants and, you know, coming in and all of that. So, and, you know, you have, again, going back to education, some of the worst offenders in this space come from my alma mater, Stanford. If you look at um, big tech and some of the most problematic companies that have been formed, they come from Stanford and Stanford is very proud of its role in creating Silicon Valley. So in terms of surveilling vulnerable groups of people, Palantir, there's a company called Palantir in the U.S., which is really awful. And some groups like Mi Gente in, in, in the U.S. have been really campaigning very hard to expose some of these companies. Now they changed their headquarters from Silicon Valley to Colorado or something like that. But, you know, again, you know, China is used as the big boogeyman, but it's not just China. It's um, it's everywhere. So and it's and and to me, you know, refugees and I, I was an immigrant. I was a refugee myself, and refugees and immigrants are ground zero for experimenting on this heavily militarized, um, inhumane type of technology. So you look at refugees coming in um, across the U.S.-Mexico border. You look at the EU Fortress Europe um, refugees going into, you know, for instance, I'm of Eritrean descent and Eritrea has um, the, the third large, I mean, it has the highest capita of refugees, per, per, ref, highest number of refugees per capita um, in the world. And um, if you look at the, the role of AI, it's been basically all of these rich companies um, selling drones in Ethiopia right now. This country is, is like people are starving because of a human induced um, a, a famine, and drones are not being used to send them food. Drones are being used in Ethiopia right now, a country that is struggling already to kill its own citizens, um, to target its own citizens. So that's AI. And then you have, um, so that's, you know, whatever face, imagine um, uh, adding face uh, related technology to that. There was just an instance of um, a drone going rogue in Libya and targeting a person on its own, right? And then you have the EU border, which where all of these drones and other surveillance methods are surveilling in these refugees who are, who are fleeing conflicts that are being driven by drones, you know, um, for their life. And then now they're again being surveilled by drones as if they're criminals, um, but they're not. So, you know, in my view, migration is a human right. So when we, when we talk about the harms of AI, it's really being proliferated everywhere. And it's not really just a US versus China or US versus Russia kind of situation. It's really everybody that is um, using it in ways that are, in my view, very harmful, even though I can say a lot about China too and Russia as well.